Players who should convert positions for cheap, good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfifa.com. A link will be left in the description and use code AlantisFootball for 5% off. So in this video, I will be analysing two wingers who I think could be converted to top level wingbacks, a Manchester United player who could solve one of Solskjaer's biggest problems, and one of the most statistically interesting midfielders who could shift positions to develop even further. Before I get into the video, remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications, give the video a like, go to the description to check out some of my other videos, and also remember to download the Avli app from the App Store to join me for a live stream on Monday at 7 o'clock where I will be discussing the week's football. So the first player on this list is Adama Traore, who is a winger from either flank, but I think he could be converted into a right wing back. It's fairly obvious why this could be a conversion that works extremely well. If we look at what makes an elite level wing back, it's a player who has offensive output in the final third of an attacker, who is a great progressor of the ball, but is also athletic and quick, whilst also being a very good defender. Adama Traore's best attribute is his ball progression in the form of his dribbling, which allows him to carry the ball sometimes from his own defensive third into the final third in a matter of seconds. Traore's strength is unreal, most likely one of, if not the strongest player in world football, whilst also being extremely quick and agile, which combines to create a player who's almost unstoppable at times, with Traore's performance against Manchester United a great example of this. I analysed Traore's ball-carrying ability against wan Saka in that video, so if you want to see that, I have left it linked in the description. If we look at Traore's FB Ref report over the last 365 days, when compared to every other attacking midfielder in Europe's top 5 leagues, he ranks in the 97th percentile for progressive carries, the 99th percentile for dribbles completed, the 86th for shot creating actions and the 98th for aerial duels won. What this shows is clearly that Traore is an elite ball carrier, with him being able to use his dribbling ability to progress the ball into attacking positions, unlike many wingers. Traore is effective at carrying the ball towards goal against the low block as well, as well as on the counter. This all stems from his athleticism, strength and pace, which is by far the best in the world. With Traore at wing back, he'd have the ball progression needed, with him having the space to drive the ball forward and would essentially just be like a winger in attack, looking to isolate his fullback in 1v1s, and if he improved his crossing ability on the run, from the right side, both from deep positions and low crosses across the box, then Traore would easily be a contender for one of the best defensive wing backs in world football. Defensively, his pace should aid him in one-on-one -on -one defensive situations, and he seems like an adaptable player, and has been used at right wing back before in his career, so we'll have a good idea of the positional elements that this role requires. He's only 25, so he's not even in his prime yet, and we have seen wingers convert into fullbacks over their latter years, successfully like Ashley Young, Antonio Valencia and Juan Cuadrado being great examples. Examples. He only has two years left on his Wolves contract, so next summer Wolves will have to sell him or lose him on a free the summer after, so he'd likely be available for between 20 and 25 million pounds, which I think is fantastic value and a bit under my predicted market price for Traore, which I would have said is around 35 million pounds if he didn't have a contract coming to its end. Teams like Chelsea, Juventus, Antonio Conte sides and Nuno's Tottenham could definitely use Traore as a right wing back due to their systems using five at the backs, however even sides who use normal four at the back systems like Manchester United, Manchester City and even Arsenal could do with Traore in their squad to add creativity from the full back position or wing back position if they decide to use a back five. Before I get into a player that Manchester United fans may be interested in hearing about, make sure if you enjoyed this video that you subscribe to the channel and give the video a like, click the bell for notifications so you will get notified when I release more of these tactical conversion videos. So the next player on this list is Victor Lindelof who I think United could convert into a central defensive midfielder who could play as a deep single pivot in midfield or in a double pivot as Solskjaer uses a 4-2-3-1. Lindelof had a tackle success rate of 57% last season and 70% the season before which is almost double Fred's which was 34.5% last season and 29.6% the season before. Whilst Fred does make a lot of tackles, he also gets dribbled past a lot. Lindelof is the opposite. He tackles very infrequently, ranking in the 4th percentile for tackles completed against every other centre-back in Europe's top 5 leagues last season, but rarely gets dribbled past. This could shore up United's midfield position defensively, making them less vulnerable when sides counter-attack through the centre of the pitch. And Lindelof may help United sustain attacks by winning the ball quickly after a turnover to keep United in the opposition's half. Overall, Lindelof should bring better reading of the game in defensive situations to the midfield position, knowing when to move across and close off space, whilst also being significantly better than Fred in defensive duels. So this position conversion could benefit United significantly if done right. And with Lindelof's weakness being in aerial duels and against physically dominant strikers, playing in defensive midfield will amplify his strengths 
but can seal his weaknesses, so it could benefit him as well individually. The next player on this list is Atletico Madrid's Marcos Llorente, who came through at Real Madrid as a defensive midfielder, but at Atleti has been used in central midfield, as a wide midfielder, as a centre forward, and even as a right wing back on occasion. Llorente is a physically dominant, powerful player, who combines pace with strength and stamina, which allows him to carry the ball forward past players with his dribbling, either through the centre of the pitch or down the right side. I think Llorente could be converted into an out and out right back or a right wing back depending on the system. Defensively he is more than capable of fulfilling this role. He completed 2.2 tackles last season, being dribbled past 1.1 times, which gives him an impressive tackle success rate of 66%. But offensively his output was phenomenal last season, seeing him score 12 goals and picking up 11 assists, an outstanding return for a primarily industrious midfielder. If we look at his FB ref report, we can see he ranks in the 98th percentile for non-penalty goals and the 97th percentile for assists when compared against every other central midfielder in Europe's top five leagues. He also sits in the 89th percentile for expected assists, as well as for non-penalty XG plus expected assists and the 98th percentile for progressive passes received, showing that Llorente is a significant threat in the final third, so if converted to an attacking wing back or fullback, Llorente should be an offensive upgrade on most fullbacks due to his output in the final third, but also his powerful dribbling which allows him to carry the ball forward, as well as his tackling ability, physicality and athleticism, which should aid him on the defensive side as well. Before I get into my final pick, a reminder to go to the description to check out some of my other recent videos. The next player who I think could potentially convert positions is Arsenal's Biyako Saka. Now most people would consider Saka to be a left winger, though he has played in multiple different positions under Arteta, from the right side of attack to a central midfield row and also as an inverted wing back, but I think Saka could become a top level overlapping wing back. See Saka's best attributes are his decision making in the final third, his vision, low crosses into the box and his curling crosses from deeper positions, which all suit him being used out wide as he will get into better crossing positions more often than if he started centrally. Playing as a wing back rather than a left winger will allow Saka to make runs from deeper positions or receive the ball in deeper positions, which will lend itself to him getting in behind the right back by making overlapping runs around the wide attacker in front of him. From these situations, Saka is going to get into a lot better crossing positions as he simply needs a pass down the side of the defender to release him rather than having to beat the fullback in a one on one if he had the ball at his feet. He has played as a left wing back in a back five, so he should have some familiarity already with what he needs to do in defensive terms terms in terms of his positioning and one-on-one -on -one defending. Combine this with his attacking output and him being used in the right system behind a left-sided attacker who moves inside allowing him to overlap and I could see Saka developing into one of the best attacking wing backs in world football. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, click the bell for notifications, go to the description to check out some of my other videos, download the Avli app and join me on Monday at 7 o'clock for a live stream and follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more content as well.